Welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be doing the State of Maritime Wrestling number three. Number three. Um, we would like to start off this episode, as always, joined by my co-host Corey. The one and only. But we posted our episode zero of the creation of North Pro Wrestling and the history of Marcus Burke. Yep. Turns out, Burke watched our video and gave us a shout-out on Facebook. Uh, credit to Joel here. I've always said Joel is the social media guy. He posts a video. If he has them on Facebook, he's like, hey, you know, I'll tag Sabotage in my top 10 tag teams. I, you know, he tagged Dick Durning and Troy yeah. Merrick and Dylan Davis in his top 10 wrestlers. He tagged Burke in this, and I did not expect. I, I just tagged him just to maybe get the people that has him to see the video i did not expect him and it, it got better and better as the night went on because i saw that he had liked and he had commented on your post yeah he said nice uh nicely done gentleman yeah which to me was like we got the stamp of approval that's awesome so Corey, then after that Corey roby show was like ah oh, dude good boys congratulations and i thought he'd seen that too Turns out he shared the video and he, had the he, he kindest words. <laughs> he shared the video and said that we did an amazing job, that we did not contact him for any of the information we had in the video. Mm -hmm. Most of this was the genius of Corey's brain. Uh, I don't know if it's genius or... Uh, I always like to say when I am bored and single, I do my research. <laughs> and uh, you can tell how single I am. <laughs> um, but yeah, he said that we did a really good job. and. Uh, he shared the video and said those kind words. Big shout out to Marcus Burke. He didn't have to do that. Uh, it, it he really doesn't know how much that means to me for sure. Oh, and to me as well. It's just it's one of these things where you ex you don't expect him to even watch it. No, but then after he watches it, comments on it, and, and then he shares it and puts these nice words. And we got a lot of subscribers out of that. Yeah, I, I think within the first few days, I got almost 10 new subscribers from that. Um, and well, one, of, one of them, which is our next point. Well, I'm going to just say this first. The power of Burke. Huh? Yeah. He freaking shared it and we're like, Jesus, look at this. Uh, big shout out to Marcus Burke, Eric Doucette. Um, a, a Uncle absolute Burke. Absolute legend. Yeah. Um, he is busy with running two bars. He's got wrestling that he's doing. He's opening up a wrestling school. Took the time to watch this, took the time to comment, took the time to share it. Uh, you did more for this channel than, uh, you will ever know you did. Yeah. So big shout out. And like Joel said, we got another guy that subscribed. Uh, one of the guys that I'm assuming seen this video and watched some other stuff. And subscribe to the channel. Clearly did. Uh, shout out to none other than El Fuego Dragon. El Fuego Dragon. Um, State of Maritime Wrestling 2. I had a legit question. I said that IHW was moving in on Miramichi territory. And there was a company there called NWE. I said, did IHW buy NWE? Well, El Fuego Dragon opened our eyes to what's really happening. Yep, he left a comment. He said that someone did purchase the name NWE and the new owner had plans to do something. That's but as far as they went. But nothing's come of it. Um, El Fuego Dragon. And I want to mention, I, I want to take a, a couple minutes here to talk NWE. Not everybody likes NWE. I do. I always called them the little engine that could. Uh, instead of having these big maritime superstars, they went with their sort of homegrown guys. They went with their superstars. The mirror, they drew crowds. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, look at that. No, that wasn't NWE. That was XWA. Well, it, XWA turned into NWE. Okay. It's the same promotion, different name, different owners. Because we went to that demolition show. Yes. I've never seen an NWE show. I've seen all their shows because they're on YouTube. Um, what's the overall legacy of the NWE? I know you don't know a lot about them. Um, you got guys 
like El Fuego Dragon and uh, Fantana, that kind of have a raw deal in other promotions, especially El Fuego Dragon. I really enjoy his work. I think he's really good. Yeah. I think he gets a raw deal. The last time I've seen him, was he at the last IHW show? He was at an IHW show that we've been to lately. Yeah, I think so. Um, but the last time I really remember him... I don't think he was there the last one. I think it was the one before. But he was there in North Pro at the Hero X show as basically part of a gauntlet yeah. against Troy Merrick. I think he's really good enough to be higher on the card than that. I'm not... Listen, this guy is currently the NWE heavyweight champion. Yep. Yeah. If NWE dies and it's over, El Fuego Dragon is the very last mm -hmm. NWE heavyweight champion. Nobody can take that from him. Nope. Um, memories of NWE for me, uh, the Forrest Cullen incident. <laughs> I almost said Sullivan Cullen, but <laughs> Forrest Cullen, where he was awarded the belt. And this is a Devin Shittick. Yep. And uh, he basically started his straight shooter gimmick here where he cursed and all that did this like work shoot promo was champion for a few minutes before losing the belt to KI real. <laughs> um, but you were really starting this program with Devin Shittick, Forrest Cullen. He's going to drop the vampire gimmick and all that. And they just fired him. Oh, you went too far. You went too far. Uh, that's one of the things that NWE is known for. Um, Homegrown talent like Ryan Heath, who became King Heath, mm -hmm. uh, Precious Preston Carter, mm -hmm. uh, El Fuego Dragon, uh, Fantana. My favorite NWE match involves El Fuego Dragon. Oh, really? Versus Precious Preston Carter. They had a match in 2019. I believe it was in April. It was in Miramichi, and it was a Miramichi street fight. And the reason why, when we were younger in our teenage years, we we were a lot in Miramichi. Yep. And they yeah, go out. We, we had the choice between Miramichi and Moncton. And we always called Miramichi Moncton Junior. Yeah. Because it was just a smaller Moncton, but it was like easier to get to. It was a lot quieter, so it was yeah. easier to drive in. Yeah, exactly. Um, and they go outside for this, and you're just seeing the city of Miramichi in the background. I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. But um. <laughs> You know, I'll defend Precious Preston. Was he a great talker? No. Was he a great wrestler? No. Did he have a great body? No. Did he get heat, though? Oh, oh yeah. he got heat. Sometimes you just need that one little thing to just get you into it. Um, I do wish he would have put suspenders on those Speedos. <laughs> I've seen his butt crack a few more times than I would like. But uh, El Fuego Dragon won his first NWE title that night against a bloodied precious Preston Carter. Um, I, I do hope NWE comes back. If it doesn't, I do think that something will replace it. I, I think Miramichi is one of those maritime territories that you really should have. And I don't think IHW is going to take that spot. I think they'll tour there. I think IHW is a Moncton promotion. Oh yeah. They won't go to Miramichi base. Um, I think Miramichi is a great, great place to just tour. Mm -hmm. North Pro could tour there. I, I think that, but I think that they would want their own promotion. I think I think eventually, if it's not NWE, we're going to get something. But you have to think, like, let's just say you have, we'll take IHW as an example. You have an IHW show on a Friday night here in Moncton. Riverview. Riverview. Why not have the Miramichi show on Saturday? You already That's have all what the they're talent doing. there. Yeah. That's what they're doing right now. But I do feel like Miramichi is... Listen, Fredericton has their own promotion right now. Yeah. Why can't Miramichi? Fredericton's a little bigger. Miramichi is like Moncton Jr. I've said it earlier. I think it, they can carry a promotion. It's not as great as it used to be, though. I still think they can carry a promotion. I really do. And the funny thing is, XWA was not a Miramichi promotion. That was a Fredericton promotion yeah. or a St. John promotion. St. John, Fredericton, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, NWE 2014 to 2019, they had one show planned for 2021. And due to uh, 
having to show proof of vaccination and all that, they canceled the show and never really Sean Nelson, Precious Preston. He did the announcement that it had been sold. The name has been purchased by someone. Uh, a big shout out to El Fuego Dragon. Um, you gave us the information. Yeah, we asked someone for the information and we got it. Got it. And uh, it's like Joel said, man, big fan of your work. Yeah. I really hope that you get a better break in other promotions because I think your uh, your untapped potential. I think NWE was just scratching the surface. I think uh, you got a, a, b- a bright future in pro wrestling around here. Talking about bright future and he, like, especially for El Fuego. Why not include El Fuego in this next thing we're going to talk about here? Which is? The IHW eight-man tournament. That, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's a good... Like, Fuego has wrestled in IHW many times. I, I feel IHW didn't give El Fuego Dragon the respect that he deserves. Um, his biggest rivalry in IHW is a mask versus mask match versus Canadian Idol. Yeah. Who came out of that on top? The loser. Yeah, we got Chris Hicks after that. He's now the artist Chris Charter. Yeah. Where where did Dragon go? You know, I I feel he's out of the mass characters in the Maritimes, Fuego's probably my favorite. I like Fantana too. Fantana does one thing that I don't like. It's a pet peeve of mine in wrestling. He talks directly into the camera. <laughs> I don't know why that bothers me so much. Coming out, he's got the face right in the camera. And it's there's a difference between Ultimate Warrior yelling and screaming while the camera's in his face. Oh, I'm gonna eat you alive. You know, and El Fuego Dragon saying, No, you people, yeah, you're with us. Blah, blah, blah. And he's like cutting a promo where I started to hate people talking straight into the camera. It goes back to the 90s when the NWO would be in the ring cutting a friggin' 20 minute promo. Their music would start. They would go into the corner and talk into the camera, cutting another promo. Um, I like El Fuego Dragon. El Fuego Dragon, he got his moment in NWE. He was their world champion. Can't take that from him. No. I hope he got to keep the belt. That should rightfully belong to him. Um, But this IHW tournament, I don't have the list in front of me. I should have. Of the matches? The matches. I have it. You have it? Could you run down the list for me, please? Okay. Uh, they're not in any order that they're going to happen. Okay. Uh, JP Sims versus Corey, uh, Kobe Christ. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Corey's on your hand, huh? Um, <sighs> I'm assuming JP Sims is the heel. I would go with a Kobe Christ win. That's what I... I, I actually did... Like a little tournament bracket like we did okay. for the playoffs. I, I have Christ winning here. Okay, so next match. Uh, Nick Teeth versus Julian Young. See, this is where it annoys me. Because I could have seen this as a finals and actually been like, oh, actually, who's going to win this one? Because smart money, Julian Young. Nick Teeth has never gotten his main event break. I like Nick Keith. I think Nick Keith is an underrated talent. I think he could carry IHW or he could get the chance to. But I think safe money is Julian Young. I, I have Julian going over here. Uh, next, uh, Chris Charters versus Kirk Obey. So the artist versus X Fit. Honestly. I'd like to see Charters win. I have Obey winning here. I think the safe money would be Obey. I'd like to see Charters. He just started this new character. You're going to make him lose already? I get it, though. You can make him lose by, like, a DQ or something. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't see a problem with that, actually. Yeah. Um, James Liberty versus Fantana. Is it James Liberty? I've seen Liberty, so I... I Okay. Um... Because he is Mark Thomas elsewhere. Yeah. Um, you know, his original name was Mark uh, James Steele. Yep. Um, I, Fantana. I have Liberty winning here. I, I see Fantana. It, well, 
just yeah. for the sole purpose. I'm, I'm, I'm going to change my answer. I'm going to go with you because I think the top baby face that's going to be in this tournament is Julian Young. See, I have two faces, two heels winning here. Okay. I have the two heels. <coughs> See, actually, I don't know if I have heels. Because <coughs> I put Kobe and Liberty as the heels winning. Liberty was a heel at the last show. Uh, Li Liberty guarantees the heel, but is Kobe. I don't know. It depends, because in North Pro, he was a baby face. I think in Kai Zen right now, he's a heel, right? Let's call him a tweener. Yeah. Let's uh, split and then the difference. The two faces having Obey and Young. Yeah. And then from here, I don't know if it's going to be two singles matches and then a winner, or if it's going to be a fatal four way. Or Let's just pick our June. June 2nd, I believe. Okay. The finals will take place. They will crown a new champion that day. So maybe it is a four way. Maybe it's two matches, and then a finals. Because you could easily have these four matches at the show on Friday that we're going to, and then have the semifinals the next show. Let's not forget this, though. So this Friday, Riverview, we were Mishis the next day, is the semifinals on that day in Miramichi. That's what I was just saying. Okay. <laughs> okay. My apologies. No, yeah, no, that's... But... Before we talk about winners, like I said, you could have included talent like El Fuego Dragon. Uh, who we thought was going to take the belt. Wesley Pipes. Wesley Pipes. Where is he Why at? not include Orion? The big guy? Yeah. I haven't even seen him yet. I, I haven't seen him wrestle. Uh, who else could you have put in that tournament? Like You could have put Remy uh, Petit, but... Well, no. He's the champ. He's the TV champ. Stay away from the heavyweight belt. You got your duties with that belt. Yeah. That's one of the things I detest about wrestling. So you didn't like the Hugh Weaving? No. No, I did not like the fact that... E even though it created that... It did, but... Okay, we got two North Pro shows that had zero titles on it. Put the championship belt on the marquee, it's going to sell. Yeah. And we had none of that North Pro. Lucky for us, it was North Pro, though. So we had fun no matter what. Yeah. But for a company like IHW that is legit struggling right now, from here to Friday, announce a, te a television title match. Announce Remy Petit versus... They said they were supposed to start announcing matches. So announce a title match. So we got four matches guaranteed. Announce another... Free they're going to have the VIP shows. Yeah. Announce a TV title match for your... Uh, Pre intermission main event. Yeah. Or as your main event, whatever. I would have it as the main event. You have a title match. Because, although, like, Sims and Kobe could easily have the main event spot. I, I think it would be Julian. I think Julian is, he's your face right now. He's your face of the company. Titus ain't there anymore. Julian is Mr. IHW right now. Wouldn't it be nice that June 2nd we crown a new champion and then out comes Titus? Oh my god. He is the missing piece right now. I hope the, he does come back. We, we're missing a piece and we need to remove a piece. Do you know what I am friggin' hoping with IHW coming full force, North Pro coming full force? I am hoping for a Monday Night War scenario. Like, IH, North Pro announced Hey, we're starting a wrestling school. The next day, IHW is like Maritime Wrestling School. They're trying to one-up each other. You're hoping that, but trust me, you don't want that. Because if we get forced into this, it's going to be, okay, this is my talent. You can't use my talent. And we just had Kobe Christ in North Pro. Is he expendable, though? If he, we're getting... He's expendable for North Pro. He's definitely not expendable for IHW. If we, if you're asking me, pick a, pick a team right now, North Pro. Um, I'm sorry, until IHW proves their worth again, I am North Pro all the way. To me, this next show. It'll show. It's a do or die. Exactly. If you don't do. You're going to die. You're dead. Um, and I hope they survive. Oh, I, I want IHWs to succeed. I would love 
for IHW to succeed. Like, I know you have way more nostalgia for IHW than I do. It's the company I've seen the most. Yeah. Live. To me, like, I've seen North Pro slash UCW, like. But at the same time, I haven't missed the North Pro show, though. Yeah. So there is that nostalgia there, too. And I had more great memories in North Pro than in IHW. When you're young, you're stupid, and you're trying to make friends in wrestling, you're either with them or they're against you. Yeah. It's one or the other. Yeah, and I, I did some stupid things when I was younger that I regret, and uh, people turned on me, yeah, wrestlers included. Going for North Pro, it's you're hanging out with your best buddies and just... You're you're in a more mature state of mind too. Yeah, yeah, it's you're that, not drinking and acting the fool and all that. I can make an ass out of myself pretty easily. Oh, I can too. I think I got you beat a couple of times. <laughs> um, but um, with IHW praying for their success, um, the one thing that I had complaints about, they're finally addressing it, was the heavyweight title. Yeah. Um, we finally got. I don't want to see Brody Steele there. That guy is a cancer. IHW, I know he's part owner. Cut ties. Cut ties with that guy. He's not good for you. No, because I know multiple people saying that if he ever comes back, they're done going to see IHW. Yeah, us. <laughs> no, there's been more. It's he's He's that old guard. He... He doesn't know what wrestling is like. He, he feels like that old Grand Prix way of booking is what it is. IHW was going to be... IHW right now should be what North Pro is right now. They should have gave the book to Burke. They shouldn't have given the book to him. But at the same time, there's loyalty to a fault. Yeah. So we've done IHW. We got a few uh, things that we want to talk about other than that. Unless you had something else to talk about at IHW. No, I mentioned Good. pretty much everything I had here. So. Uh, I got written down, New Breed, New Belts. Yes. New Breed Wrestling had their first show back. And after I put over their title belts, how I like their belt, uh, they brought in new belts. Um, I usually give a name. Like you got the winged eagle belt. You got the big eagle belt, the big gold belt, the undisputed yeah. belt, the big ugly belt in WWE. <laughs> um, I'm going to call these belts the All Japan Belts. Yeah, <laughs> after the pictures you sent me, definitely, especially the tags. The, the heavyweights are a little different. A little different, but uh, they, they are modeled after... So JP Sims was given the new title belt, which is modeled after All Japan Pro Wrestling's PWF heavyweight title. And Chris Cook and Andre Myatt, got a brain fart there for a second, sorry. They won the vacant new breed wrestling tag belts that are shaped like the old all Japan NWA international tag belts. Yeah. Um, the tag belts look great. Hold, hold. Let's talk about the world title first. Okay. Um, it's okay. I prefer the old one. If I, it, yeah, I do too. If I give this one a, like a, a rating, I have it as a six. Compared to the old belt. Mm, mm. Dead center, five. The tag belts, on the other hand. Here's here's something. <laughs> Looking closely at the belts, these are literally copies of the All Japan belts. Yeah. It says international tag team titles on them. Um, they're not... You downgraded them. In my opinion, they're not personalized like the, end, like the new breed belts before. You say it's a downgrade. Oh. The tag belt... No, no. The tag belts look better. Okay, okay. The tag belts look better, but they're not personalized. No, no, I get that. It says international tag team titles when you really it's the end, new breed wrestling titles. Because my opinion on the tag belts, especially with classic Chris Cook and old school Andre Myatt. It's a classic design. <laughs> um, having that old school design <sighs> belt, I find these belts fit them so much. And I like these belts so much that I gave them a 9 out of 10. Ooh. I got a question for you. Chris Cook was, let's say around early 2010s. He's on the rise. He's IHW heavyweight champion. He's Red Rock wrestling champion. Um, he's one of those guys that had his moment in the sun as a main eventer. Yep. And then took a dip. I feel like him teaming with Andre Myatt, making this tag team, matching gear and everything, 
I'm loving it. Oh yeah. I, I love, like I said, classic Chris Cook and old school Andre Myatt. Yeah. And, uh, just the guys are best friends in real life. Yep. I think it gives new life to both guys. Yes. Um, I'm really enjoying this. I hope they have a long tag team reign with this. You're not going to have these guys as your main title holders anyway. So yeah, having a tag team with these two guys just works perfectly. Both had their moments in the sun with different companies as their world champion. Um, Chris Cook, like I said, he was the Red Rock Wrestling Champion. He was the IHW Heavyweight Champion. Uh, Andre Myatt's a former NW, NBW, New Breed Wrestling, Heavyweight Champion. I get can, I, NBWA, blah, blah, blah. Was he Andre Myatt or was he like the he was answer? He the answer. Okay. And he's also a former Red Rock Wrestling Champion as the answer. Has he any, ever <coughs> won any titles as Kilgrave or um, Voorhees? No. No. Okay, so those characters were just solely based on... They're almost like the Undertaker character. Yeah, where, where you it, don't need it, the belt. It, you don't need a belt. You need a storyline. Which, hopefully, uh, next show... I'm hoping. North Road, we get something. <laughs> well, can you imagine? They just give up on the storyline, and we get the old school team. <laughs> I wouldn't hate... I wouldn't hate it, but I'd I like... I wouldn't hate it for the purposes, but I would hate it for like the story yeah. of the TV show. Um. So new breed wrestling. It's um, I'm glad to see it's back. I'm when I see a promotion that last aired a show in 2019 come back. I'm like, okay, I'm happy that you get the. Uh, if you get this show and then you don't get it, no, at least you ended it on your terms. Yeah, not because of COVID. Yeah, so, it, it's just it was a sad thing to see when COVID hit and no wrestling. You know, these three years flew. But at the same time, it was super slow. Oh, yeah. Um, so that was New Breed. Uh, we got something here near and dear to our hearts. So in 2013, Rene Dupree. Shout out to Rene. Rene Dupree. He's uh, one of the goats of maritime wrestling. Great guy. Great guy. Uh, go listen to his podcast, too. He's a super funny guy. Café du Rene. Café de Rene. Uh, he started Grand Prix Wrestling back in 2013 while he was working with All Japan. And one of the guys that he brought over was the then All Japan Gaora TV champion. Yep. Seiya Sanada. So Seiya Sanada wrestled in the Maritimes. So to us, he is... Uh, he, if you wrestled in the Maritimes, you get a shout out here. Well, <clears throat> as Rene posted after this happened, he was like, oh, like, shout out to a uh, Grand Prix. Um, original? No, not original, but like a Grand Prix, like someone that's been uh, in the Grand Prix. Uh, alumni? Alumni. So I think it was last week. Seiya Sanada, now just known as Sanada in New Japan, he won the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship, getting his moment. Um, sure, he's from Japan. He was in all Japan. He was all that. To me, I, I know Joel was always, I know Joel was a way bigger fan of Sonata than I was. And I'm a big Sonata fan. And you're a big Japanese. Oh, I love fan. Japanese wrestling. But the, th and I do, I know I'm going to make you do some work here. If it's possible, if not, just cut this part out. I would like you to post. As we're talking about Sonata, the picture of you and Sonata. I was thinking about doing that before we even... Okay, because I didn't get to meet Sonata. But you, didn't, you didn't go to that last show. No. Um, Where I had asked Dupree if yes. Sonata could come out. And so Joel got to meet Sonata, got to take a picture with Sonata. It makes you feel good to see that he finally gets the belt. Yes, oh, 100%. I was so happy. I usually don't like, I'll watch a show here and there. I track down the show just to see this. He has a new finishing move. It's like a sort of weird DDT. Okay. He hits it on and he beat Kazuchika Okada. Yeah. He beat the golden boy. Um, I unfortunately feel that it will be short lived. Oh yeah. Um, I think he will get it back though, but the new Japan formula is you win it. For a month or two, you lose, you lose it. it, and eventually you get a longer reign. Yeah. Happened to Naito, happened to Jay White, 
happened to Kota Ibushi, um, happened to Okada, <laughs> uh, happened to Nakamura. So a big shout out to Sonata. Um, he right now, uh, I'm torn between him and Naito as my favorite in New Japan. I, I like Naito a lot too. Tetsuya Naito is, he's a freelancer now though, so he's not going to get as much opportunity. Um, Sonata left Los Ingobernables de Japón. He is now in a stable called Five Guys or Just Five Guys. Just like the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird name, but you know what? It works. You give it the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. It's made out of uh, former members of Suzuki Goon. So we just wanted to give a shout out to Sonata. Any memories of Sonata? Uh, funny enough, um, right after Sonata won, uh, Bobby Sharp yep. posted their the matches, match, right? Yeah. And those, like that match was incredible. It, it's bizarre how that was 10 years ago and it's already nostalgia. Yeah. Like I remember one of the memories I had from those Grand Prix shows is Renee the week before. I don't know if you were at the first show, but the, sh the first show I went to, Renee defended the Gaura TV. He had just won it. This All Japan title belt. It's a red strap belt. But you got a picture with him in the belt. You did too, right? I believe you did. I think you actually got to hold the belt. No, I touched it. Okay. Uh, that's the one thing I looked at Renee. I was like, can I touch the belt? <laughs> yeah. And he like, he like holds the belt and I just like touch it. And he like jokingly goes, what are you doing? <laughs> like trying to scare me. But to me, it was like being a Japanese wrestling mark. And I'm like, holy crap. This is the All Japan TV title. Yeah. All Japan Pro Wrestling. Masawa, Kobashi, Kawada, Giant Baba, all these guys. And I was like, wrestling's amazing. Wrestling is really amazing. So, a uh, big congratulations to Sonata. Don't forget about us Maritimers that uh, supported you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fun little trivia. Do you want to know another Japanese wrestling mega legend? Retired now. That uh, his first excursion was the Maritimes. A lot of people don't know this. 1988, Masahiro Chono wrestled in Atlantic Grand Prix Wrestling and was one half of the North American Tag Team Champions with Bulldog... Was it Bulldog? Bulldog Bob Brown? Yeah. yeah. So Chono, and he wasn't Masahiro Chono. He was the very racist name, Tokyo Chono. <laughs> That's a typical name for Grand Prix. Because yeah. uh, we got that same year that we got Sonata, we had uh, Tokyo Inabe. Tokyo Inabe, yep. Who is in Noah right now, doing really good, I believe. So, we are going to move to a little sadder story here. The GOAT, Charlie Hubley, is out, injured. He uh, injured his ace, his, is it his? I don't remember. It's his knee. I don't remember if it's his uh, ACL or something like that. He's out for a few months. North Pro has said, listen, the belt's vacant, so we will crown a new champion on May 19th. Or or they they, they, they hinted they, at that. They would address the situation. Okay. But non, not only is he up for North Pro, this guy was supposed to yeah. defend uh, the Propeller Arcade title. Yeah, Pro Wrestling Unleashed title. Uh, he was set to face... Oh, I had this on the tip. Uh, in my Wasn't mind. it um, Masters? Chris, Chris Masters. Masters. There were so many matches that had Hubley in the next month or two and that he can't now get to. I Charlie Hubley is going to be such a megastar in the Maritimes. He, he already is. He is, yeah. God, you hate to see this. No, it, Well, you hate to see this happen to anyone. And it's one of these things where Charlie Hubley... At, like he's not there unless he's there on crutches or something. I wouldn't, I wouldn't test it. Like get back to hundred percent before we see you again. Oh, well, I think he's already put out promos and stuff for some of the companies. Yeah. So I know he's advertised for July already versus somebody. I saw, I saw something on social media, but, um, the NSPW maritime title, it is now vacant again. Again. Uh, I've said this North pro is cursed with champions. Yep. Uh, do you want to get into uh, the curse of North Pro or do you want to wait to the next episode? I think we could probably wait. Huh? Yeah. So we'll get into that. We'll uh, write a note about that though to make sure. Every episode I've said or starting with the last one 
that I want to do a little fun activity. Last one was, what is the most prestigious title in the Maritimes active? I asked Joel if he wanted to do this. He said, sure. I said, you do not tell me your answer. I'll go I will first. Not. Okay. I'm not going to tell you my answer. So we're going in blind here. So booking the Maritime title and the new champion. Floor is yours, my dude. I couldn't think of anything. Like, usually I'm good with these things and I can draw it out like a little storyline. I couldn't think of anything. So I went with the simple eight man tournament. Okay. Uh, the competitors would be Lincoln Steen, Kobe Christ, Jason Boa. I don't know his first name, but Silva. Alex Silva. Alex Silva. Hollywood Cole. JP Sims. Thad Howitt and Troy Merrick. Okay. And obviously the uh, there's four faces, there's four heels, so it works out. I would have Troy win this. Okay. Just simple as that, Troy wins? Just simple as that. I, the reason I asked you to, like, and, something like that. And if Troy's not the winner, give it to Thad. Yeah. Thad would make a good champion. The reason I thought of that is I was watching a match on New Scott's channel. Shout out to New Scott. We're always talking about him. Um, great, great content creator. This like, guy pumps out content. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was a match at Propeller Arcade. And one of the competitors is a babyface. He's currently a junior heavyweight champion. Geek Town Junior Heavyweight Champion, something like that. And I thought, this guy is a heel. His girlfriend is managing him. She also referees temporarily, or on part-times. I thought a heel Andrew Love with his girlfriend would make a great Sammy Guevara, Ty Conti type of storyline. Okay. He wins a ladder match, and now he's this obnoxious heel with the hot girlfriend telling you how hot he is and how he's his love and all that. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then his girlfriend saying how good he is and blah, blah, blah. Wrestling fans would detest, would detest this, and it would get heat. It would be a great storyline, but by doing that, you're also breaking up one of the three tag teams that North Pro has. They appeared once. I think it's expendable. I think your I think your tag team scenario will come mostly from Quebec and guys that can wrestle sabotage. I think the Maritime Rockers, I think I've seen them once and it was there. I've heard that name once and it was there. Yeah. So they didn't even have matching gear. I think Andrew Love has this good looking guy. He's the NSPW Maritime Champion. He's got the hot girlfriend. He's telling you how good he is in the ring. He's telling you about all the money he has. He's talking to you about how hot his girlfriend is. And he's a champion. Mega Heat. So I do that. Mm. And when I told you that, I'm like, do something that's unlikely to happen, but could happen. So I don't believe it's going to happen. I really don't. But it's something that could be interesting. Yeah, I went more realistic, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see Troy winning it, though. I think Troy's bigger than that belt. Oh, I yeah, he is. But... <sighs> You're going to have this whole season worth of storylines basically already made that Troy's not going to be involved in that world title picture. Yeah. Well, I don't know. So, like, nothing's been announced uh, on who's taking on, um, on Dick Durney. We're pretty, I'm almost guaranteed we're going to see a rematch with Estrada. Me too. Um, after that, yeah, I guess you could. Well, we're going to stop there because episode four will be out. Well, we'll be recording it. We'll be recording it 
soon. And um, we got some more content coming. So we're going to end it there. Okay. You tell us, who would you pick as the next NSPW Maritime Champion? Leave a comment. Yeah, definitely leave a comment on this one. I'm interested in seeing how many people watch or listen to this and go to the North Bro shows, or even just by the names that we've said, what your thoughts would be if you know these names, mm -hmm. who you think would be a good champion. Because there are plenty of options. And if you don't know the names, cagematch.net, look up North Pro Wrestling, all the names are there. New Scott's YouTube channel. New Scott's YouTube channel. Uh, North Pro's YouTube channel. They have a lot of stuff there. If you have Bell Community 1. Yeah, Bell Community 1. You can actually go watch the, last the, season. the show. Um, so that is it for this episode. Leave a like down below. We've already asked you to leave a comment, so I'm not going to ask again. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, we're, we're enjoying doing this. Absolutely. Uh, so we're not going to stop posting content. I think the state of maritime wrestling is my favorite that we're doing because it sets us apart from the rest. Nobody else is doing this. No, yeah, we're doing, yeah. And realistically, if this channel starts making money and stuff, it's a thing where we could expand just going to just North Pro or IW. Mm -hmm. We can go to CCW. We can go to UCW. We can go to Kaizen. We can go to Red Rock Wrestling. Take videos there. Yeah. Have little uh, uh, Hawks video type thing there. I don't know if I want to take videos during wrestling. Yeah. Like hockey. I, I don't know how you did it with hockey, especially like how interesting it was. You should see how many. I'll talk about this later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Take care.